everybody. Welcome to Psychic Medium Tony Green Relationship Edition. So today I have a very special co-host and we are going to be discussing all sorts of relationships, do's, don'ts, wills, won'ts, and remember, I'm not the boss of you. Whatever makes you comfortable, go ahead and do it. Uh, but these are just suggestions, just little things that might help you on your journey to finding what everybody likes to call the one. That one person that makes you, you know, drop your panties without thinking about it. The one. I don't know. Or that one person that you think is going to fulfill all of your... Um, uh, all of your everything. Okay, so let's let's go to my very special co-host, Scott, Kevin Scott. <laughs> How are you today? Hey, Tony. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I appreciate that you were looking for someone who's who's made every mistake in relationships uh, <laughs> to come on the show to learn from my errors. That's so funny because when I told um, my sister... Um, that I was doing a relationship show, she looked at me with like this shocking look on her face and said, you're not giving relationship advice, are you? And I, I pretty much had the it same. It was perfect, actually. Yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes. Because once you've been through the good, the bad, and the ugly, I think you can draw from that to give to people and help them out in some sort of way, right? Learn from our mistakes. That's the theory. Oh, gosh. Please learn from our mistakes. Do not, do not, if you don't have to um, go through something, definitely don't do it. So, Scott, I want to start off today by talking a little bit about when is it appropriate to ask those questions in a dating scenario? Whether you meet somebody online, whether you meet somebody organically, whether you're just having coffee, whatever it is, when is it appropriate to ask, you know, the more, what would we call these questions, Scott? The questions that are more telling about where each person is going. When do you feel that that's an appropriate, it's an appropriate time to do that? Well, in general, uh, I, I like to put it out front so nobody's wasting anybody's time um, and, and just explain you know, where I am in life and what I'm looking for. And obviously, um, not specifically with the person you're having the discussion with, but you know, generally uh, where you are. If you're just looking to have fun, or if you're uh, open to something else, and 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 my experience has not been online. It's it's generally been more organic, mm -hmm. and so you sort of skip over those hurdles by getting to know each other. But I, I think it's critical uh, that you be honest, and and maybe you know this person is either not what you're looking for, or maybe you weren't looking for them, and they just came in your life, uh, mm -hmm. and it's a lot more than you were ever expecting. But I, I think it's critical for your self-respect uh, to know what the other person, what page the other person is on. And that can be out of the box. Right. It, exactly. And I, I agree 100%. At this point in life, and at any point in life, you going out with someone, whether it's a male or a female, if you're going out with someone and you are knowing for yourself what you want, if you if you're looking for something serious, something not so serious, if you're looking for the one and you should be able to ask that of the other person. Now, it doesn't mean you're asking that person, do you think I'm the one? That would be awkward over the first cup of coffee. That would be a little <laughs> out yeah, there over the, <laughs> like don't be sipping your cappuccino. Right, that's, that's a critical, that's a, that's a critical Go ahead. Right. That's a critical distinction, though, is, you know, yes. are you open to something like that if it would develop as opposed to, hey, uh, this is my ring size. <laughs> exactly. So one of the best ways I've heard it put, and there's a couple different ways you can say this without making it personal, without making it like about me. But if I'm sitting with somebody and we're we're having a conversation, we're on what 
I think is a date. First of all, establish, is this a date? Because <laughs> there are a lot of people that'll go, no, I, I'm just looking for friends. <laughs> so establish before the date that it is a date maybe with some of these people out here. Second, one of the things that I, one of the ways that there, there are several different ways you can ask if you don't want to be too blunt and to the point, you can just say something as simple as, so why, why are you dating? What's your purpose for dating? That takes a lot of pressure off because then somebody can say, I just want to get to know people. I want to meet people. I'm not looking for anything. And it's not personal. It's not like, it's not like I'm saying, why are you dating me? Where is this going? Right? What do you think about that? I, I do. And again, my, my experience is a little different because it, it, we were, you know, the, the person I've seen now, we were sort of friends first. And it was a, just a natural morphing. I, I, didn't, I don't do online dating, right. but I do think, or, or sort of blind date kind of thing. So there's sort of some buildup for it. And so you're not really confused. But I do think honesty in terms of expectations or questions is paramount. And you should be able to ask that right out of the box. Because you, you got to know if you're wasting time or if they're wasting time. And I would think regardless of your gender, uh, that's something you would want to get out there uh, immediately. Yeah. And I'm going to, and, and thank you for saying that. I think the only person, people who wouldn't want to get that out there, regardless of your gender, is are people who might be trying to play you. And I, I just want to say one more thing. If you're afraid to ask a question, you shouldn't be dating or you shouldn't be dating that person. I agree. 100 percent right i agree and, 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 the, you, and you and you'll get the response that'll tell you it's a mistake pretty quick yeah and, and you can't be afraid of that response you just have to be like that so i'm thank you next like i want to find out before i invest feelings in a person where it's going i want to know like if you're just looking for friends that's great I, I, at this point in time i don't have time for friends I barely have time for, you know, well, we won't talk about what I personally have time for, but I'm just saying, like, that no. That could be a whole other show. <laughs> yes. It is for a whole nother show. Um, so let's, let's go to the first caller. How about that? Okay. So, so okay. When I call out your area code, please have a specific relationship and or dating question ready. Take us off of speakerphone. That means put your phone to your face. If you're using Bluetooth or anything else, it will catch the noise around you. So please put the phone to your face and we will have a conversation. Area code 917, what's your name? Where are you calling from? 917? All righty. Maybe that was. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. Hello? <laughs> Okie okay, dokie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, what's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Stacy. I'm calling from New York. Okay, Stacy. What's your relationship question for us? Oh, I was asking, well, I don't have a relationship, not until next summer. Okay. So, uh, I can skip, I can wait to call back, but it's just me right now. Um, so let me ask you, why don't you have a relationship until next summer? Is the person out of town or what's your deal with that? No, I'm waiting to move. I haven't moved yet. Once I move and get settled in, then I can get into a relationship. Okay, I, I get that. I get that. That sounds that sounds fair. Uh, Stacy, I want to ask you, when do you think, so I'm going to turn this, since you don't have a relationship question, I'm going to ask you to participate with the relationship questions. When do you feel like it's appropriate okay. to ask those questions? Those questions, those really telling questions about where the relationship is going, when do you feel like it's it's a good time for that? When do I feel like, for example, if I meet somebody, when would it be the appropriate time to ask those questions? Yeah, like not, not like, and we're not saying where do you think this is going with me, but more so just like, when, um. yeah. I would care at least four weeks. I would try to go. I would wait at least. I 
I'm kind of, me, you know, I, I kind of play it as just treat it like popcorn, even though I might be trying to take it seriously. I would just treat him like popcorn just to see, it kind of just go out with him at least a few times by the third date or by the fourth date, then I know exactly where this is going. Okay. Now, one of the things, like, and here, Scott, here we go. I've heard, <laughs> I'm going to put this out there. Um, there's this expectation or this thing about the third date. The third date is the date where a lot of people are like, well, this is the third date. You know what happens on the third date? I don't prescribe to that because, you know, it takes a lot more than three dates to whatever so i but if it is a third date thing if somebody's thinking and this is this is the irony of our society if somebody's thinking if there's this preconceived notion that by the third date it's pants down why is it wrong to ask on the first or second date where is this going other than the third date pants down okay who wants to answer that first scott <laughs> and again, you've already established. Uh, I was not aware of the third date rule. Uh, and I'm <laughs> sort of curious about what it being treated like popcorn is. I'm picturing a lot of salt and butter. Uh, but but, but I, I do, which, you know, we, we can talk about that too. Uh, I, I, Tony, I think any time is the right time to ask those questions. Although, I, again, I'm not, I'm not subscribing to the third date rule. Yes. I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to the third date rule. Do you? <laughs> Do you, uh, Stacy? Correct. Do you subscribe to the third day third date rule? It all depends. If I like the person, if I like him, I think we're gonna have potential. I date him, but if I'm not really into him, then I probably won't even call him. Okay, I get that. <laughs> I understand that. Very good. Very good. Okay. Well, thank you so much for calling in. And I want to tell you, you have the potential to meet somebody in March, but I do feel like you're going to wait until June. Now, I feel like wherever you're, I just, I feel like I keep hearing March for you. There's going to be a lot of changes in your life in March, but I feel like in June is when everything is going to take off for you. Okay, love? Sounds good. Thank you. You are so welcome. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. Okay. So you are welcome. So then I, I want to ask, Scott, now that we've established, you know, the sooner you ask the questions, the better. Let's talk about how to ask those questions, because sometimes I think for women, it's a little bit different than men. Um, I think there are a lot of women that in our society and in mother, many other societies, um, it's, it's a male dominated, uh, whatever it's called that men, men make the decisions in relationships nine times out of 10 in most societies. So women are always waiting on a man to like ask those questions, um, for, to, to ask us out to to make the move or or to you know propose or whatever it is we wait in many um, instances for the man to make that move and I'm traditional I do I I won't I I would be that person that would wait so. If a woman is in a situation with someone and she's waiting, what do you feel like is, I don't want to say an appropriate amount of time to wait because it's, it's each person is individual, but if you're with, if you're dating someone, and this is the biggest question I get from a lot of women, he hasn't proposed yet. When is he going to propose or when are we going to get married? And there is a lot of concern around that as far as uh, that situation. And I think those those sorts of things should be discussed early on and then held to, right? There's, there's a point where you have to really hold to those things. And 
what I mean well, by, I, I, go ahead. I, I would say most, most husbands would disagree that the men get to make the decisions. But I understand that was the premise of your question. <laughs> At least once the marriage starts. But, in fact, I'm pretty sure about 90%. But, but there's, there's a certain issue. I, I think the, really the key thing, whether you're a man or a woman, is you have value. Nothing is more important than your happiness. And it doesn't mean it's more important than anybody else's. But you deserve to be treated like you have value. Yes. And if you're in a relationship where you are not being recognized for the value you have, and, and that's something I try to get much better at, particularly with the current relationship I'm in, is making sure that person knows just exactly how valuable she is to me, um, then something's wrong. If you have to keep questioning, you know, am I valuable? Am I being treated appropriately? There's a problem, and it might be a problem more than a discussion can solve. And, and the other rule I have in life and relationships is, you know, when people show you who they are, believe them. And I stole that from somebody much smarter than me. <laughs> but, you know, if someone does, if someone does it, which is a lot of people, uh, but, you know, if, if you're not being treated the way you want or need to be treated, there's a, there's a serious problem. And uh, maybe you can get that person to understand, and maybe it was just simply a lack of communication, or maybe you're not that valuable. But I, I think the way you find that out is not by saying, "Hey, when are you going to get? When are you going to marry me?" Um, and again, there's a lot of unhappy married people, so I don't know why that's anybody's goal. The goal would be to find the right person and let it sort of progress where it's going to progress, which may be marriage. But you know, when, when marriage is your goal, there's a lot of you know, unhappy people that are, that are married to people they shouldn't be married to. Uh, oh. But I do think you can say, look, uh, I, because now, now we're not talking about in general, what are you looking for? You're talking about in the two of us, you know, I see this going X, do you agree? Um, and either they're going to, you know, run out the door really quickly, or they're going to give you some sort of uh, half-baked answer that shows they're uncomfortable, or they're going to be honest and you're going to know where you stand. But it's really important to know where you stand because that's not changing. It's just giving you the knowledge of where you stand. Right. And absolutely, I agree 100%. And I would even go so far as to say is if you're pushing for, you know, if something goes wrong in a relationship or you don't feel secure in the relationship, you shouldn't be pushing for the next step because the next step isn't going to change the personality of that person. It isn't going to change the way they behave. It isn't going to change their character or how they treat you. It's just a next step. So it, it's only going to make it worse, right? Because now they're trapped in something they may not have wanted to be in. Yes. And, and they're, you know, they're, they're, I don't want to say survival instinct, but it, it's just going to be worse. It's certainly not going to change it for the better. I've, uh, you know, I, I agree 100%. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, sometimes you're in a relationship with somebody who just doesn't want a commitment for whatever reason, if it's because they want to play the field or they're terrified of commitment, whatever it is, find out what the reason is. And if you can live with that, live with that. If you can't move on, but the sooner you find these things out and move on, the better off you are going to be because inevitably if you're with somebody who doesn't want a commitment, if you're with somebody who is in a third party situation, if you're with somebody who's wh whatever your personal situation is, the sooner you find out the truth, the sooner you take yourself out of denial, the, the sooner you can move on to something that's much better. And I think we've all been in situations with people who are maybe weren't the best people for us. They, they taught us a lot, but they weren't our ever after person. Right. And then we get to, once we get out of that situation and Scott, I think um, Scott, Kevin Scott, I, that always reminds me like Bond, James Bond. I don't know why I call it. I, I'll just call you Kevin now, or I'll keep calling you Scott either way. Um, I think that the sooner, and we've all had this experience where once we get out of something and we look back, we can go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I went that long or it got that bad. But then it really does open the door to something better. And would you like to speak on that? Well, I think that's true because every day you're settling, I, I think at the risk of being dramatic, a little piece of you dies, right? Yes. Because you want to be happy and you want to be cherished and you want to be recognized. 
and you know you can make all sorts of excuses and then you'll you'll go it certainly has been relationships where you look over and you geez i thought i ended this two years ago what was i thinking yeah. um and, and every every day a little bit of you just sort of you know you settle and you take the rejection or you you take the slight or you're not valued and, and a little piece of your self-esteem goes away and then uh it's horrible and then you know the, the next step is just to get out of that relationship and then if you stumble into a really healthy one it is like you know the heavens open up and the sun is there it's like what was i doing all that time being unhappy and and feeling less about myself when this person was out there and i wasted all that time um you know being miserable when i could have been you know i could have found him or her earlier but i just wasn't looking because i was so busy being miserable and then you think I'm an idiot because you know life is too short, whatever age you are. And why would I, why would I limit myself to being unhappy when somebody or something is out there? Yeah, one hundred percent. And I think that people get stuck in, like we once we get into something, we get stuck in. But I love them. But if I hurt them, I'll hurt them. If I leave them, I'll hurt them. Or we have any number of reasons not to leave someone. But the the real thing is, we're afraid. We're afraid that maybe we won't find somebody better. We won't find somebody else because that's the other biggest question that people ask me. Will I meet someone else? Will I meet somebody better? Well, for the love of God, let's hope you don't meet the same person again or somebody worse because I can't imagine that <laughs> with what you've been going through, right? Like it's got to get better. And the, the fact that we don't even believe there might be somebody better out there, how defeated are we at that point and love the fact that well that's because you've been con you've okay. been conditioned by that partner to think that yeah because every day you you wake up unfulfilled or unsatisfied or unappreciated and you start to believe it exactly and i'm gonna say this if the if you love this person that's great you can love somebody up close and you can love them from a distance but if you are loving somebody who isn't giving you back that same level of love that same level of respect that same if they're giving you false promises or not even promises love them from a distance it's much easier and it's it, it's better for your personal soul it's better for your heart and find somebody who's on your level find someone who can give you that same level of love and respect that you're capable of giving and they are out there listen to scott listen to the way scott's talking he is a very amazing man first of all and this is a so how much should i pay you to get you to say that that's great you say that one more time i'm recording i'll walk around saying it but you don't have to because it's true here's women here's a man who is telling you who's straight out of his own mouth that you deserve to be cherished, you deserve to be appreciated. And if you're not, go, because there is somebody out there. And Scott is not the only man like this. I mean, you know, I, I'm just saying there are a lot of really healthy, loving and caring men and women out there that are single. You just can't settle. Would you agree with that, Scott? Obviously you would. No, absolutely, because if you settle, as I say, it was a little bit dramatic, but you're killing yourself a little bit every day, and, and you deserve to be loved the way you love. And if, if, you're, if your affection is unequal, the relationship will not work and should not work for you uh, because you just deserve better. Yes, yes. And I, I want to go back to where we started at the beginning for a quick second and say, you know, again, if you're afraid to ask relationship questions, if you're afraid to ask that person if they're looking for something serious, if they um, if they're seeing other people, how long their last relationship lasted. These are no folks. Let me tell you something. These are normal conversations. These are normal questions that people ask people. I ask them to my female friends. If you're afraid to ask that to a potential partner stop dating and don't take this personally. And if this upsets you, I'm sorry, stop dating, get maybe set up an appointment with a counselor or read some books on relationships and being healthy in relationships because you deserve to know from the beginning 
where it's going. And I'm going to tell you, if you're afraid the person's going to get upset and answer the question harshly or get angry with you, number one, then you've been programmed or trained not to ask uh, or how, how would I say that's got to, to not ask uncomfortable questions. Is that the right way for me to say that? Like someplace in sure, your past. I think that uncomfortable, but they might be for somebody, sure. Yes, but you don't know that the person across from you is going to be uncomfortable with that question or get upset with that question. You're presuming that based on your last experience. And big, big hello here. If this person does get upset with that question, uh, get up and walk out. Get up and walk out. Because nobody should get upset about a question, right? Nobody should be upset if you ask them a question, right? Am, am I, am I? Right, well, certainly don't go back for a second one. You know, maybe <laughs> yeah. if the dinner was really good or something, you can hang around and finish. But yeah, don't invest any more time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I would get up and walk out. <laughs> I'm very practical, Tony. <laughs> I know. I'm so dramatic. <laughs> if somebody gets upset with me for asking a question, I just know at that point, like, well, it's not going to work out. Let's not waste anybody else's time. <laughs> and then when I'm the lobster at that point. <laughs> yeah, you can take mine home with you. I'm done. Thank you. Have a have a nice <laughs> life. No, I don't hate you. I just don't want to be treated like this. But thank you so very much. Right. <laughs> right. And I'm, <laughs> oh my goodness. But I have, you know what? I have very different views. Like I, I don't necessarily always believe in marriage, right? I don't believe in the piece of paper. If you want to have a ceremony and say you're committed to each other, go ahead and do that. But I don't think if I want to break up with somebody that I have to go get permission from a judge. Like, I just don't, I don't feel like, like, okay, we're not getting along. Please, Mr. Judge, sir, can we please get a divorce, please, sir? I mean, I, that's my personal view. So this is who you're taking relationship advice from at this point. Well, that, we were talking about that earlier. The marriage shouldn't be the goal. I mean, the, the existence yes. of the marriage shouldn't be the goal. The, the finding the right person is the goal. And if that yes. manifests in marriage, great. But too many people, speaking to a guy who's divorced, of course, uh, have, have you know, make the mistake of thinking, yeah, I just got it. The, the, the marriage is the goal. And really finding the soulmate at the risk of being cliched is the goal. Yes, 100%. I agree. And a lot of people think if they can push it to that next level and make it, they can change that person. And I'm going to tell you 100%, the only person you can change in this world is yourself. So please. Yeah, that's a big mistake. They are not going to change and they're going to resent the attempt. Uh, as I like to say, it's, it's like trying to teach a pig to dance. You get frustrated and the pig just gets nervous. <laughs> but they're going to be the same and you're not going to be happy. God, I love your sense of humor. <laughs> oh, yes. I was yes. No, it's true, though. It's true. Like, it's 100%. 100%. It's true. Okay. Scott, thank you so much for being uh, a guest. It was such an honor and so much fun having you on today. I um, want to thank you. My pleasure. And um, I absolutely hope, my pleasure, Tony. Anytime. And I hope so. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold you to that. I'm gonna bring you back again. And I do hope uh, that you have a very merry Christmas, along with everybody else listening. Please have a very very merry Christmas. And a happy. If I don't see you before New Year, a happy New Year. I'll be back Monday at noon, um, and you can call in and ask any questions you want. Uh, about life, love, career. Thank you so much for joining me today.